I'm getting my boat ready to go on a five day fishing trip and I notice fuel gauge is not working. Let's see if we can't fix that. My name's Randy and you're watching Go Midwest Fishing. So it's really important that your fuel gauge works because you don't want to be stranded out in the middle of the lake because you ran out of gas. I've already been stranded out in the lake three times, not related to the gas gauge, but due to other factors. And believe me, it's not fun trying to get back to shore. So uh, to troubleshoot this system, it's a pretty simple system. Really, you have the gas gauge, you have some wires, and you have a fuel sending unit. And it's hooked into the 12-volt uh, power supply on the boat here. Uh, for me, I think I already know what the problem is. I believe it's the fuel sending unit. It looks like this here. I got a new one. And I noticed when I bought this boat, the fuel gauge wasn't working. When I checked this, the float on the end was sinking. So I kind of modified it and cut a piece of cork off and stuck it on the end there just to something that would float to get me by. But now I think it's uh, kind of waterlogged with gas and it's sinking and it's not working anymore. So we're going to take it out uh, of the fuel tank and replace it with this and see if we can't get it to work. All right, to get to your old fuel sending unit, you need to find the fuel tank. And in mine, it's in the floorboards under here. There's a little vent uh, in the middle here where it uh, can vent out. So uh, in order to get to it, I have to take up this whole middle floorboard. And I've had this out once before. And from the looks of it, I already took the screws out. But if not, you got some screws usually around here. You just pop out and then pry this board out of the middle of the floor comes up should expose the gas tank right here yeah there it is I wasn't sure if I screwed that back down or not and there is our gas tank I'll just move this board out of the way here we go here's a closer look at the gas tank in my boat Pretty long tank. I believe it's like a 35 gallon tank. Holds a lot of fuel. So here's a hose going into it there. And right down here in the center, right there is our new or our old fuel sending unit. And you see here is a, a ground wire attached to the side. Now it's important this ground wire is attached to the same ground wire that uh, your fuel gauge is attached to. And then this pink wire is going to be your fuel sending uh, wire. It goes up to your fuel gauge. And then there's a little float in there. When it goes up and down, it changes the resistance on this wire and then it changes the uh, fuel gauge reading. In order to remove the old one, there's just uh, looks like about one, two, three, four, five screws holding it on. And then you got the, the two here holding the, the wires on. So let's remove the wires. And as always, you're working around gasoline and vapor, so try not to cause any sparks, use any electrical tools, that kind of thing. There's one. And then this one's held on with a nut. And then just remove the rest of these screws. Pretty simple operation here. Now here's a quick way to test to see if it is uh, your fuel sending unit or it's your fuel gauge or your wires. If you take that uh, the pink wire and the ground wire, and you touch the ends together, then you go take a look at your fuel gauge. It should show full when you touch the two ends together. All right, now that we verified it is the uh, fuel sending unit with that little test we just did. Now we could pull out the old one. It can be a little tricky because they're kind of a long stem on these things. Just kind of work it out and just make sure you know which, which way the float was going. Your old one looks like this one's going up towards the front of the boat. Actually, it's just a small little one here. Come here. <laughs> there you go, it's going to leak a little. And just to show you what I, what I did, this is the end of a fishing rod. I took the cork off the end of it there. And it, uh, it worked in a pinch, but it's time to get a new one. 
That's all there is to it. When this goes up and down, it changes the resistance in that wire and changes your fuel gauge. Pretty simple. And uh, again, wear uh, rubber gloves or something when you're working with gasoline. All right, let's pull the new one out of the package here. This one has a little bit longer float. So I got the, uh, ordered this Molar brand. And it's uh, good for tanks from 6 inches to 12 inches deep. So you do have to measure how deep your tank is and then adjust the length of that float accordingly so you can cut off part of this wire. So I'm not sure how deep my tank is, but my tank is extremely full because I thought it was empty. <laughs> I went and tried to fill it up and I kept trying to put more gas in it because I thought it was empty. And it just wouldn't go in anymore, so... That's when I uh, took a closer look at it and realized that the gas gauge was broken. All right, I'm just going to use an old ruler that I don't really care about. Put it down in there and measure how deep it is. So it gets right about seven inches. Let this dry off over here. All right, so on the back. On the back of your carton here has a little uh, graph how long to make your, uh, well it has tank depth and then the float arm length associated with. So if we go with 7 inches, float arm length should be 5 inches. Alright, so I take my float arm length, measure it out 5 inches. So it's just held on by a couple little washers there at the end. So just slide it. Kind of tough, but slide it down. Measure and make sure we get it just right. A further. Pretty short one actually. There we go. Right at five inches. Move this top washer down. Right through my glove. There, and that's all it is. Now I just got to cut off this excess wire. There we go. Our new float with a little bit shortened arm. All right, before I permanently put it on, there's a little rubber gasket you put on there before you put it in. And I'm noticing the the holes in these must not be symmetrical because it only seems to go in one way. So it'll make sure the holes are lined up the way they're supposed to be. Right, and then just screw them down with the supplied screws they give you. So they give you all brand new screws with this. couple things to note here. Uh, I ended up putting the old screws back in there. Here's the new ones that were supplied with it. Um, they're just, they look identical, but uh, when you closer look, the threads are a little bit finer and they didn't uh, screw into the same holes. So I had to re use the old screw holes or the old screws from the old uh, sending unit. And the other thing is, uh, this one, the old one had a round connector on it. This one has a flat connector. So I'm uh, going to have to cut this one off and replace it with that one. Okay, all you got to do is slide it on. There we go. Now the other one still has a round connector, so that one will just go on like it was. Give you new hardware for this too, so just put that on, not on top of that. Tighten her down. Mm -hmm. 
All right, that's all there is to it. Let's test it out. All right, there you have it. The working boat gauge again. It only took a few minutes to fix, only a few dollars. It wasn't that expensive, and anyone can do this. Well, I hope you found this helpful. If you want more great information and some of the best lake reviews on the web, visit GoMidwestFishing.com. All right, everyone, see you next time. <music>